In this video, we're going to take a look at an application that actually goes and finds all the executable files or executable programs within a Windows operating system. And so what we've got to start with, we've got a Windows hard drive mounted here on my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by opening up Backtrack, Forensics, uh, Forensic Analysis Tools, and then this Misidentify. And we're going to go ahead and open this up. And what you're going to see here is there's a couple different options we're going to definitely want to use the dash R for recursive mode which means that not only the folder but all the folders within it are going to be searched. We're going to also look at the dash A as something that we want to display all the executable files regardless of their extension. What this is going to do is basically anybody who may have renamed or any application may have a, the wrong file extension is going to be um, archived here in a file for us and this is going to be great in case there's a hidden file or something that somebody's been trying to hide uh, within just renaming a file to make it look like something else. It actually reads the head information for the file. So that's going to be great for us here. Now we're also going to look at the, let's see, RAB, the bare file name. We're going to try this one time just to be able to see um, the names by themselves. And then we're going to take that off and actually use a dash L instead, which is going to give us a full file path. And we definitely like to have the verbose mode. Uh, that way we can actually see what's going on while we're running it. So those are some of the options that we want to have while we run this. And so we're going to go ahead and try this and I'll show you how this is going to work. I'm going to type in the command misidentify. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in the location. Or actually I'm going to type in the arguments that I want. So I'm going to use the dash. I'm going to use the R, A. I mean, this first time we're going to do B and then the V uh, options. And I'm going to go ahead and hit space. And I'm going to type in the file path that I want. For this case it's going to be the forward slash root desktop and then this this hard drive that I've got mounted here for a Windows hard drive. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you're going to see that it's going to go through and it's pulling out all of this information for us. And so we're going to let it run here. It should only take a minute or two uh, and then it will be done. And you know the first time I ran this I actually now just realized what I did wrong on this particular one. I did not redirect it to any text file. So what actually happened was all of the files are listed and of course in the terminal it doesn't display all of my lines. We actually just have a limited amount of lines that it will display if I scroll up. And so I don't get to see all of them. So what I should have done, and I'm going to go ahead and redo this now, hit the up arrow, do the exact same command, but this time I'm going to redirect it to a new file. I'm going to use the greater than symbol here. And then we're going to go ahead and I'll just make this go to the desktop as well. And I'm going to create a file just calling it um, list1. Now we'll go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see that it's going through, but it's actually putting them in a list. And I should have done that the first time so I can keep a track of everything that's running through. So we'll let this go ahead and run. All right, now that's finished up. So we can go ahead and open this list up. And we can actually see all the applications that are found through in the Windows folder. And you're going to see there's a large list of files. And they're not in alphabetical order, but you can use this and you can extract this into maybe a different file format to sort these through if you really wanted to see them in something like alphabetical order. So here's the, the list of just the files by themselves. And you can see some of the extensions that will pull off the OCX, the EXE, the DLLs, and so forth. And so this does pull off all the executable files that we'd find in a Windows operating system. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to go ahead and run this again. But this time, instead of actually using the B, I'm going to use the L. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And this, oh, actually, I want to make this go to list two rather than list one. So there we go. That way we can actually compare the difference between the two. So it's going to run. It'll go ahead and update all these same files. And now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and close the terminal here. There we go. And I'm going to open up the list two. And I can see on this list two that we've got uh, the full file path. Let me go ahead and maximize that. So you can see that we've got a full file path now to where these applications are uh, if we wanted to find them. And so there's the differences between the way they're listed. Now there's, this allows us to do several different um, possibilities. One thing I can think of that would be a great use of this application is if you ever wanted to do um, programs that are on your computer, maybe put them on a list of um, approved programs versus uh, maybe blacklisted programs. You could use something like this to run through and just to be able to figure out what programs are actually running or can run on a Windows system. There's a lot of other things to look for if it's for forensics use, maybe used for going through the files and just looking to see if there's a particular application that may be on here, um, looking for you know a key application. You should be able to find this. Again, you could export this to a, a different file format, maybe something like Excel, and be able to sort these things, or a spreadsheet application to sort these things alphabetical so you can actually go through and get a good understanding of the programs 
or applications that are running on the Windows system. So this concludes the video on using MISIdentify to find executable files within a Windows system.